Good morning, friends. What a great way to start off our Monday morning, right, with Philippians chapter 4, um, and maybe one of the most famous verses of Paul, which we'll get to here in just a minute. Um, but first, let's, let's pray together. Dear Lord, we're so thankful once again that we can come together in this way. Lord, we're thankful for our safe and our happy get-togethers, um, celebrating America's independence yesterday and uh, over the weekend. Lord, we're, we're thankful that we can gather together. Lord, we're thankful that we can um, celebrate your work in this nation, Lord, and, and we lift this nation to you as well. Um, Lord, just be the guidance for the, for the people in power, Lord, for those that rule this country, Lord. We ask that you guide them, Lord, that you protect them, uh, and that we continue to live in a country, Lord, that we, where we can worship you and honor you openly and publicly. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Philippians chapter 4, right, continuing on with Paul's letter to the Philippians. Um, uh, you know, I mentioned kind of in the little brief introduction there that Philippians, um, one of the probably most famous verses of Paul that, that we see used today, um, that you hear people recite all the time, Philippians 4.13, right, um, which is what the, um, the reading was for today um, in the little assignment, right, said uh, to write Philippians 4.13 on a post-it note and put it somewhere where you can see it. Well, I have mine right here. Um, it's kind of hard to see with the light, but um, I have it right here on my computer in front of me, and I'm going to leave it there. Um, this is a verse that's very familiar to me. Um, uh, I can do all things through him who strengthens me, as the NRSV says. Um, you know, I, I think so much today, um, you see this verse kind of thrown around everywhere. Um, and a lot of times it's taken out of context, right? Um, you know, <laughs> I just imagine, you know, rolling up to to a, um, you know, say a lake or something and, and just looking at the other side and going, man, I can walk across this water, right? I can get to the other side by walking on top of the water. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? And then you take a step out and you sink, right? Um, we, we have to look at the context of this verse, you know, or, um, you know, there's a giant cheeseburger and giant plate of fries in front of me. And I go, man, I can finish the sandwich. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right. Um, I, I know. Right. It sounds goofy, but um, there are a lot of people that take this verse and play it that way. You know, they think that they can do um, that they can do everything right we have to look at the context of this so what paul is writing about here is um, paul is imprisoned right um and suffered much persecution and through that persecution paul says that you know uh, what what carried me through how was i able to do all this and he's saying well i i do it through christ who who gives me strength in everything that i do um, so, you know, whenever we're talking about the, 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 the work of the Lord, talking about, you know, things like missions fields and stuff like that, yeah, yes, we're going to get our power through Christ, but we have to remember um, not to take this first verse out of context, right? Um, yeah, and, and people find glory and honor and, um, and promote the kingdom in, in many ways, and I don't, I don't want to um, diminish that in any capacity, uh, but we really have to look at like I said, the, the root of this phrase um, and just how sometimes that's taken out of context. And, um, you know, if you, if you roll up to a, um, to, you know, Zimbabwe and you're helping to build houses, then by all means, right, this is the kind of, like, Paul thing, like, yeah, I, I can do, I can do this because Christ got me, right? And, and, and that's the bigger picture. Um you know, we, we find, sometimes find this in, in the minute details, in, um, but let's just, let's carry on from that. I've, I've elaborated on that um, enough. If you, you know, if you, if you feel like I've knocked you down or something, that, that was not my intent. Um, but, you know, let, let's keep this verse in context of what Paul is writing here. Um, so we're, we're going to move on from that. If you, you know, want to discuss that with me, 
let me know. Um, but I really want to look at verse 8 here. Um, in the few verses following, probably 8 and 9. So let's look at those. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, that if, I, that if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Right, and this is kind of that elaboration of Paul, right? Of hey, look, I've turned the corner, right? That's how I know that Paul is with, or that God is with me right now, right? I turn the corner. I'm doing these things of God, and he's using his example once again of his life, right? Is Paul does also often, right? Because Paul has this great conversion story of you know being um, a persecutor of the Christians and then turning and being a follower of Christ. Um, just this great this great story. Um, so he's saying, look, all of these things, right, whatever is commendable, um, whatever, you know, is true, honorable, just, pure, is pleasing, right, keep those things up. Keep those things up. And as you pursue these things, and as you go through these things, as you, as you, um, you know, follow God in these ways, right, God will be there with you. God will be at peace with you if you keep this kind of command here, right? If you follow in the footsteps of what God has laid out for you. Right? And it says that, that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and that the God of peace will be with you. Right, that's reassuring, isn't it? Right, as we are running our race, right? This is our, our fourth reading, right? Our fourth, um, our fourth day of this. Um, we, you know, we skipped Sunday, you got to hear the sermon yesterday, um, and then today, right back into it. But as we're running our race, right, it, it is where, as our legs hurt, it is, you know, we're getting tired, right, my pain's on the side, or we can't catch our breath, we need a drink of water, right, whatever it is, as we're running our race, we have to know that the God of peace is with us. Because we're doing his work, we're doing his will. Right? We, we're learning more about him. We're growing in our love for him. We're understanding more about him each and every day as we read, as we interpret, um, as we reflect upon his holy word, and as we meet him each and every day in prayer. So friends, my hope today as we start our new work week, as we uh, move on now after the 4th, and we're looking forward now to, I hate to even say it, but right towards that end of summer, um, I always feel like July 4th, it's like the downhill slide, right, to the end of summer. Um, but as is, is we're moving into, into that season, just remember to keep running the race, right? Keep strong, keep faith, keep true, right? As I said, keep true, right? Keep honorable, keep just, keep pure, and pleasing, right? That's how we know that God will be on our side. So friends, um, have a blessed day today. Um, remember a couple days on Thursday night, our Zoom meeting, and we'll have a lot to talk about this week, right, um, after all of these readings. So I hope you are blessed. I hope you um, continue to keep up with this. And tomorrow we move into the book of Colossians. So um, just moving right on along through the New Testament. Friends, be blessed and have a great day.